Watch Mr. Wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. Hi, Mr. Wizard. Oh, hi, Betty Sue. Whose birthday? Anniversary? Why, you mean because of all the flowers? Yeah. Oh, well, no. Uh, you see, today we're going to investigate flowers, so if we're going to investigate flowers, we have to have some flowers, don't we? I guess so. <laughs> and that's why I have them all here. By the way, have you ever seen that flower before? No. Mm -hmm. funny well, looking. It's funny looking, mm -hmm. and yet you've eaten the results of that flower, uh, oh, hundreds of times, I imagine. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. And before you leave today, you'll find out what that flower is. It's a very common one, actually. Uh, not the flower part, but the, the fruit that's the result. It's pretty. What's, uh, what good are flowers, anyway? Well, for birthdays and, uh, you know, other special occasions. You mean they're decorative? Yes, and gardens, yes. you know. Right, they're very decorative, and we grow them very often because they're very beautiful. But how about to the plant? What good is a flower to the plant? Well, to attract insects, I think. Why would a plant want to attract insects? Well, um, something about um, pollen and seeds, you know. Well, you seem a little uh, vague <laughs> about <laughs> some aspects of it. So let's start uh, and investigate what good a flower is to the plant itself. And let's do that by looking at this plant right over here. Do you know what that is? A lily. That's right. This is the lily. And what we want you to do is to look right in here in the center part of the lily flower. Now, here's a pencil, see, so that you can indicate what you're talking about. And you look in there, and what do you see inside the lily? Well, I see... I don't know how many of these little funny things sticking up with sort of a powdery stuff on them. Yes. Look. And uh, this is sort of white. There's a white thing mm -hmm. here. And then there's white things around the outside. Petals. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, now let's find out what all these things are for by actually taking the blossom and taking it apart. Okay. okay? Let's not take that one because you, then you can refer to that one. Here, let's take this one. Now, you put it down here and carefully take the white section off. That's it. Now, why don't you pile them all up over here and then make neat little piles of everything that you find. All right. Here. <laughs> okay. That's how many of these? Three. Three. Four. four five, five. And mm. six. Now, let's put this one out there because I want you to see that yellow stuff yes, that's on it. getting all on my feet. Okay, now take this section apart. This? Yeah. Take these? These are the little powdery things. Those are the little powdery things. That's one, two, <laughs> three, three. Let's see if I can get four, five, six. Six of those, and how many of these? Just one. One. Okay, now here's what all these important parts are. These sections right here with that powdery stuff on are called stamens. Stamens. Yeah, that's a new word. You probably should remember that now. Stamens. Okay. It comes from the word stamina, meaning strong. Oh. Now, on the top of the stamens are, is the powdery stuff, which is pollen that you've heard about. Oh, pollen, and, sure. And you can see there's some of it here on the table, see it? Mm -hmm. and, so, and you can see some of it here on the leaf. All this powdery stuff here is the pollen. This section over here, this part here is called the pistil. The pistil. Mm -hmm. Put your, touch the top part there. It's sticky. Feel it? It's quite <laughs> sticky. So at the top is this sticky stuff. Then at the bottom down here is a little um, sort of bag-like arrangement, and this is called the ovule because in here are where the eggs are that are going to become seeds. Mm -hmm. So here's what happens. When the flower is ready, the pollen is either blown off over here to the top of the pistil, or bees or other insects carry it over, okay. you see, or it just falls, and one of the little pollen grains lands on this sticky stuff. Then it grows a little tiny thread-like thing all the way straight down this long business until it gets right down to here. Then when it reaches where the egg is, all the living material of the pollen grain comes right down and unites with the egg part, and we now can have the beginning of the seed, and it now grows. Oh, that's yeah. where the seeds are. That's where the seeds are. So here are the important parts of the flower as far as uh, propagating themselves. In other words, having seeds to grow new flowers. Now, just so that you remember it, what are these tall things with... Stamens the with pollen. With pollen. This? It's a pistol with icky stuff on it. <laughs> yeah, and what, at the bottom? That's the ovule, right, where, where the seeds where are the grown. Oh. Are. Okay. Now, you see how important it is to the plant? Because if you didn't have these parts and this didn't take place, there wouldn't be any new plants. Right. See if you can now find these same parts over here on these flowers. Here, let me move them over here. Come on around over here. Where? Right here. Over here. 
Is I want you to identify these, first of all. Gee, I've seen them lots of times, but I don't remember the name of them. Well, here's an easy way to remember the names of these. Here. See that? Leaf. That leaf. Uh, see the particular shape of it? Sometimes you have to be careful because florists, when they sell you these flowers, they cut the leaves off uh, into different shapes. But this is roughly the shape of the leaf. Um, do you remember the name of the men who fought in the Colosseum? Gladiators? Gladiators. Well, they were called gladiators because the Latin word for sword is glad. The first part of that word, see? Glad. Not quite that, but it has another <laughs> ending on it. So that a man who used a sword was a what? A gladiator, a sword man. Good man, sword man. a gladiator. Mm -hmm. Well, the Romans, when they saw this plant growing in the fields, noticed this tall leaf sticking up, and it looked to them like a little sword. Oh. So they called it a gladiolus. Oh, gladiolus, that's yeah. right. So that's how you can remember this uh, oh, plant, which is, means little sword in uh, Latin. Now, here's the pencil. You take a look at a blossom over here, and see if you can find stamen and pistil. Okay. Well, I think this, these little ones here, these three, yes. would be the stamen. Yes. And I think this little one here would be the pistol. Right. You can usually tell because there are usually more stamens than pistol most of the time. And if it has any powdery stuff or looks sort of bulky, that very often indicates that it is where the pollen is. Okay, very good. Now, here, take the pencil, because I'm now going to bring another plant over for you and see if you can find the stamen and pistil of this one right here. I don't think I've ever seen that one before. Oh, you really haven't? Well, here, probably you recognize it more in this form. Oh, a rose. <laughs> yes, a rose. This one has been grown so that it has a very showy flower. This is the wild rose, you see, and oh. it is not, it's not cultivated for this purpose. So see if you, mm. in there, see if you can find uh, pistols and stamen. Well, would these around the end <clears throat> be the stamen? Mm hmm And the middle be the pistol? All right, it would be the pistol part. Let's cut this one apart now. See, there's so many petals here that you can't <laughs> see it. Let's get a knife and cut that one right down the middle and see if you can now see the parts. the pencil? Sure. Down here is obviously where the seeds are going to be, you know, at the bottom yes. of that little packaging. So the things that connect with that, these right here, be the pistols. must be the pistols, that's oh. right. Now around the outside here you can see them, they're not powder yet because the flower isn't quite ripe and fully matured yet. The stamen? Right, they must be the stamen and that oh, later on will be the way the pollen is. By the way, notice there's something else about a flower which we should uh, understand. These parts right here are called what? Petals. And see, let me pull this off here so you can see this one. See this section? Yes. Those are called sepals. Oh, I always thought they were leaves. <laughs> well, they're kind of li look like leaves, but they're a very special kind called sepals. S-E-P-A-L-S. -E sepals. Sepals. And in the case of the rose, they're little green things around the bottom. In fact, here, let's look at that wild rose again. And you can see on the back of the big rose here. See them? Oh, there they are, I guess. Yeah, there are the sepals now. Now, you can identify them, and the reason they're called a uh, kind of special name is because over here in the bud, let's see if I can find one here without getting my fingers stuck with a thorn. <laughs> see this? Yes. Where you, see the sepals? They're on, around, here. The, around the bud, yeah, around the, the flower. Pencil. There, you see? Yes, here they are. They're the covering for the bud of the flower. Oh, then they hold it closed. And they hold it nice and closed and keep it protected until the flower is ready to mature, then it gradually opening. And you see, you can, when it opens in the case of the rose, it now becomes these green things at the bottom. Okay, so we now have two new terms, don't we? Uh, petals and, and sepals. And sepals, okay. Now, let's see if you can find the petals and sepals on the, uh, the little sword here. Oh, the gladiolus? Gladiolus, yeah. Now, there's your flower, the one that you looked at before. Yes. Let's go up from that now, up in here someplace, and see, can you see any uh, sepals? Well, are these the sepals? Because they're covering the flower. Well, it looks like it, doesn't it? It looks like these things right here are sepals, but they really aren't. They're sort of a modified leaf, which uh, botanists call a brack. A brack. The sepals here are in this flower. Are in the flower? Yes. In other words, this time, the sepals no longer are green, but they've now taken on the same color as the petals. In fact, look at the petals. You see there's three on the inside and three on the outside yes, here. Yes, I see. You point to them now. Here, these three are outside. Yes. And Those these three, three, and these three are inside. Actually, these three are kind of all folded together, aren't they? Yeah, those, they almost look like one. Well, those three on the inside are the petals, and those three on the outside are now the sepals. See? Oh, so the sepals are almost like the, the, right. the petals, rather. See, some cases the plant adapts these sepals so that it'll look like the rest of it to make it more showy and whatnot, so it'll attract insects better. 
So now the sepals you see are part of the, the thing that you would ordinarily call the flower. How about the lily? See if you can find them over there on the lily. Petals and sepals. Well, let me see. I don't see any Look down at here. the back here. You see, do you see any uh, green things around here like at the rose? You no, don't. I huh? don't. Okay. Well, Look at the petals, then, the thing that you would ordinarily call the petals. Oh, I think I see. What? Well, these three outside ones, right yeah. here, see, this and this one. one down here. Right, these three. Would be the sepals, mm -hmm. and the three inner ones, one, two, three, be the petals? Right. Oh, I yeah. see. That sort of like the gladiolus. Sort of like that. In fact, if when these are in bud form, these are all closed, you see the sepals now would cover the outsides. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. But these are all opened up, so we can't see them there. Well, good. So you found them now. Petals sepals, stamen, and pistils on these flowers. Now let's try a new kind. And I'm going to throw you a curve. This one's a little different. Here. First of all, what is it? Daisy. A you daisy. Know, That's he right. loves me, he loves me not. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you ever do that, he loves me, he loves me not, always start with he loves me not. He loves me not. First. Because there are an even number of these things that you would call petals sticking out from the daisy. So if you start with he loves me not, then the number two will be he loves me. That's cheating. <laughs> and then you'll always end up with he loves me not. Uh, all the Daisy family have an even number of petals, so mm -hmm. it's quite easy to do. Well, now, where are the petals? Where are the sepals, the stamens, and the pistils? Well, uh, with these, these are the petals, I think. Well, they look like petals, don't they? Sure. But they aren't. They're not? No. Where are the stamens and the pistils? Well, would they be in the middle here? Looks all like it, but they aren't either. So what we had better do is to cut one of these in half like we did before, because this is a whole group of flowers called a composite. Composite. Yeah, let me see if I can... Uh, let's cut this one off. Put it down here. Now, see if I can take one of these things off that you call the petal first. Yeah, there. Actually, this is a whole bouquet of flowers, you might say. Because each one of these little things, let's see if I can get one out here. Each one of those little things is a flower. Each one? Yes. If you examined these with a high-powered magnifying glass or um, a microscope, you'd find that each one of those little tiny, looks like dot here, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Is actually a flower. It has stamen and crystals and petals and the whole thing. I just drop it there. This <laughs> one right here. So they're all grouped together there, see, on this flower head. Oh, I see. In fact, these things that you call petals are a different kind of flower that grows on the same one. There flowers too? Yeah, see if I can. There, this is the thing you call a petal. It's actually five petals all in together. Now, let's see. Right down in here is a flower part. Oh, it's very tiny. Very but tiny. I see, you can see just it. see it down there. So that you see, the thing you call a petal is actually flower. So this is a flower that's made up of two different kinds of flowers. And of course, all together they're called a daisy or a chrysanthemum or sunflowers, all the same sort. Well, so this is a little different, isn't it? Yes, yeah, a little bit. How about this one? Orchids? That's right. These are orchids. These are very exotic plants, which you have to grow inside up here in the north. But they grow wild in lots of sections of the world and are extremely showy and very beautiful. They are. Okay. First, find petals and sepals. Well... How about right here? Look at this. Okay. Well... Oh, I think I see. Yes. With these three outer ones, one here... Right here. And one here... Mm-hmm. Be the sepals? Right. See, they're the same color, but they obviously are not the, look, don't look the same as the petal part. No, because they're they? outside. Right. Now, now switch over, over here to this one and see if you can show me the petals. This, this, and this would yeah. be the petals. Mm -hmm. Very good. Notice this bottom petal. This is one of the ways you can identify an orchid, uh, or a plant that belongs to the orchid family very often, is that this bottom petal is, is sort of twisted and makes a little cup shape, uh, and insects land on this, and this is a very showy one. Where do you suspect that the stamen and pistils would be then? Will they be inside yes, this petal? Yes, cupped inside here. Now, let's see if I can open these very carefully so that you can see. There, see? Oh, but that's different than it's the other one. It's quite different, isn't it? In fact, there's only one thing it looks like, isn't it? This one. Yeah. Well, in this case, the stem part of the stamen and the pistil are all fused into one. Oh, I see. See? And the flower parts, the pollen and the whatnot, are up here, and the egg would be down, you know, down here. Oh. And one of the interesting things about mm. the violet, or the mm. violet, the uh, orchid, is that there's one uh, species of orchid, or one variety of orchid, that when this now goes to seed, and the seeds are fertilized, it now gets into a long pod and has quite oily, and we squeeze out some stuff, and it's called vanilla. Vanilla? Mm -hmm. Oh, it, uh, it comes a, from an orchid. From an orchid, the, yes. The, the vanilla we eat. Mm -hmm. The vanilla extract, you know. Yeah, I know, that you put in cakes mm -hmm. and stuff. So there's a whole very interesting family 
of orchids. You see how now each flower has adapted it, the various parts that manufacture the seed in different ways. And uh, even the, the leaves and petals and whatnot around it are quite different. This one grows its roots outside. Well, this isn't, <laughs> no, this isn't a root. Uh, the roots are down here inside, but these are special things that the plant uses to help support itself, because very often the orchid does not grow on the ground. It grows in the crotch of a tree or someplace, oh. you see. So it has to hang on. How about this over here? See that little potted plant there? This one? Yes. That's, that's pretty. That's a begonia. A begonia. Now, see if you can find the uh, important parts of the begonia flower. Well... Stamen and pistil. Would these be the stamen? These things here? Yeah. Okay. Where would the pistil be? <laughs> <laughs> this is a little different. Here, let me have the pencil in it. This is the flower that has the stamen, all right. Mm -hmm. See? But this is the flower that has the pistil. They're two different ones. Yes. On the goodness. begonia and some and uh, several other plants too, they they have male and female flowers. In this case, this is the male flower and this is the female because that's the one that has the egg. So there's a whole group of plants like that too. Then how about this? Oh, a snowball. A snowball. You have them in our yard. Okay, fine. Now, good. Then you could then you should be able to find the stamen and pistil in the snowball. I should. <laughs> yeah. Look, let's look at one individual uh, flower here. Let's see if I can find one. Uh, here, this one right here. See it? I don't see anything but a dot. All right, there's nothing in it at all. This is a very unusual plant in that the flowers have no stamens or pistils. In fact, this does not form a seed. So how does it grow? Well, this is because man has developed this kind of plant. And originally there were hydrangeas or snowballs that had seeds, and, you know, and plants just like any other one. Except that man discovered you could cut off a branch and, and grow that. And when that happened, then no seeds formed. So that all of the uh, snowballs that are around have been grown from slips or, or, or little I branches, see. you see. So they don't form, and the flowers are just showy, but don't form seeds. So you see, there are even some f flowers where the flower itself doesn't really do the thing that most flowers do. Yeah. No stamen, <laughs> no pistils, you see, therefore no seeds. Okay, now you've seen uh, the whole gamut, practically, from the typical one, the lily, way back there, all the way around here to the... Uh, um, snowball. Now, do you know that you eat flowers? Eat them? Yes. Haven't you ever heard of anybody eating flowers? Well, there's somebody in a Broadway show who eats an orchid. I know that. Oh, and they do that to sort of make her look unusual. Huh? Well, I can see where it would. <laughs> <laughs> Except that uh, you're not considered unusual, nor am I, and uh, we eat uh, flowers all the time, at least uh, the bud part of flowers. You don't recognize them. Well, come over here. If uh, somebody gave you a bouquet like this why wouldn't you be flattered at getting these nice buds not particularly <laughs> <laughs> you know what that's called uh, broccoli oh broccoli yeah. broccoli and if you look at the broccoli sure you eat it all the time and if you look at this part very carefully these are the buds of flowers and if you let it grow a little longer you know they'll open up into real flowers so there you're eating flower bud whenever you eat broccoli here would you like this bouquet cauliflower yes cauliflower Oh, flower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, this, uh, this means in Latin, uh, cabbage flower. Oh, right. And these are the flower parts here, actually in bud form yet. It would have to grow much more before you could see the flower part. How about this? A uh, giant-sized turnip? It looks something like <laughs> uh, the tip of a, of a what? Uh, or a, um, asparagus? Yeah, sort of. Actually, what it is, is an artichoke. Here, hold that. Have you ever eaten artichoke? No, I don't think so. Well, some, someday you will, and they're, they're very sort of exotic. And if you let this thing grow, see, here's the flower. Oh, that's pretty. It grows right on top of it. Right. Well, this all opens up, and the flower parts come out. See, so there's the flower of the uh, artichoke. Well, so now you see there are three different kinds of flowers that you eat, and you didn't even know about it. <laughs> now, remember this plant that uh, I talked about when you were coming in? That's awfully pretty. Uh, this time, I'm going to show you a bunch of flowers that you probably should know because the results of the flowers are very common. You eat them or know them. This is one of them right here. You recognize that at all? Not at all. See, here are the three little flowers up here. Well, if you look right down this stem, see? Those look sort of like little bananas. Congratulations. That's they exactly are? right there. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> little green bananas down here. Oh. And you can see now up here the flower part. See these three the three flowers are they now going to sort of like bananas. Well, they're going to, to they're going to change into these little green bananas, which later on get ripe, of course. Where did you get all these flowers anyway? Well, a lot of those that we that we saw earlier, I got from the New York Florist Club. See? Oh, 
But these, the exotic ones, I got from the New York Botanical Garden. Have you ever been out there? Oh, sure. It's beautiful. Isn't it? It's a lot of fun to walk around. So I suggest you go out there and look around again. And obviously, this one doesn't grow outside here in New York. <laughs> so this had to come from the greenhouse, you know, inside where they keep the right temperature and whatnot. And some of the other things that we're going to see came from there, too. So I'd suggest you go up there. It's a lot of fun to walk around. Well, you recognize the banana. How about, um, well, here, let's try this one. There's the flower right there. See it? Yes. Did you recognize that one? Oh, this is sticky. Yeah. That must be the pistol. Yeah, that's right. Smell of it. Smell like anything? It smells pretty. A lime. It looks like a lime, isn't it? And that's because it's a green lemon. Oh, a lemon. A lemon <laughs> that isn't ripe yet, you see. So there's what the fruit looked like. You know, na naturally it gets uh, ripe later. But this is the flower of a lemon. It's pretty. Isn't it? Smells nice, too. How about this one? Gee, it's <laughs> pretty big. Do you recognize the leaf? I don't think you'd recognize the flower, but you might recognize the leaf. No? no. How about this stem part here of the, of the leaf? That looks sort of like rhubarb. That's right. That's what it is. This is rhubarb. Oh. And when you let... Ordinarily, rhubarb is grown from cuttings and one out under the ground. But this is the flower of rhubarb. That's pretty. Isn't it? Most people never see it because it's often cut away and they don't I use it. I eat it. it. <laughs> okay. Now, how about this one? Funny looking. Isn't it? It's kind of wilted, too, because <laughs> I got it from the botanical garden a while, a while ago, and it's been sitting in water. But there's the little flower right there. It's a very, awfully small. Very small, insignificant little flower. And when that matures, it forms into a thing like this. Prickly berry. A huh? prickly looking berry, that's right. And when they take this berry, and when it now becomes a sort of bean, and they squeeze the juice out of it, and uh, they call it after the plant. It's a castor plant. Castor oil? Castor oil. <laughs> so that's, like what, that. that's what it looks like. <laughs> now, if you go to the botanical garden, you'll see lots of other plants, not necessarily in flower, but the plants of tea and coffee and things, so you might go over and want to investigate those. Now, let's look at a whole group of plants that uh, are kind of very unusual. Some of them that you can find right here in the woods. Over here. This one you won't find in the woods. Here, get, come on around over here. So we can... Do you know what this is? No. This is a calla lily. Oh, I've seen it. It doesn't belong to the lily family, but it's kind of called that. And you see that most people would think this is the flower. Yeah, it looks like a big petal. Yeah, it isn't. See that thing on the inside there? Yes. That's the flower. That? Yes. Here, let me... Uh, where's the... Well, here. Use that knife over there. Because I want you to... I want to open this up. There. Now, scrape a little bit this here, and you'll see the... See, there's the pollen, see it? Oh, I see it. And so that must be what up here? These must be the stamens. Right, and now down here, you see the little black or dark dots down here? And those would be the pistils. Those would be the pistils. So here's the flower part right here. Oh, actually. Not the whole thing. See? This is just a sort of modified leaf. Oh. Now, this belongs to a, a family, uh, one of which you'll find right here in the woods. Here. That looks like a green orchid. Well, it does sort of, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And here, it is right here. This is called the Jack in the Pulpit. Jack in the Pulpit? Where did yeah. they get that? Well, see, this looks something like a pulpit, you know, that a minister might talk oh, from. Oh, yes, I And there's see. Jack. He's making a sermon. Oh, you see, I in see. There. And this, of course, is what? That, that little... Would that be the flower? That's the flower. That's oh. right. And this is sort of the modified leaf. And you can find these right in the woods, so you might take a look at them. Now, a lot of people don't realize that uh, various kinds of trees, in fact, most trees, flower. You know, some trees that flower, don't oh, you? Oh, sure. Apples. Apple apples, trees. Apples, right. Apple blossoms. Well, there are a lot of trees that flower, but most people don't pay too much attention to them because you can't see them. Here, for, for instance, is one that is um, chestnut. And obviously, you can see the flower very oh, easily, very can't pretty. you? It's very pretty. Yes, yeah. whole tree full of these. But here is another one that you probably wouldn't pay too much attention to. Here is the maple. Let's see if I can find the... There. See oh, that? I see. There are the flowers of the maple. These are already fairly well gone to seed because you can see little seeds are already formed there. And because they're not very showy, most people don't think about it. But oak and very and many other trees have flowers that look something like this. I never noticed them yeah, before. Well, next time you notice them because you'll see flowers on trees like this. Then, let me get this out of the way. Do 
you know what these are? No. Well, these are sweet peas. Sweet peas, I've yeah. heard of them. They're kind of like the, you know, the regular family of peas that you eat, but these are especially adapted, and, and I'd like to show them to you because they're extremely famous. famous. Have you heard of Mendel's Law? No. Well, he was a monk who lived uh, a while back, and he began to grow sweet peas, and he began to grow certain colors and to uh, prevent them from being cross-pollinated and whatnot, because what he was interested in is finding out what the laws were that governed heredity. Heredity. And using sweet peas, he was able to finally come up with what is now known as Mendel's Law, which will, which will explain, for instance, if you have a black dog and a white dog and you breed the two of them together, or how many puppies are going to be black, how many are going to be white, and so forth. All from sweet peas. <laughs> all from sweet peas, yes. So that these are very famous flowers, and he was one of the early botanists, people who study plants. And, of course, the, plants are, the flower part of the plant is extremely important because it's one of the methods whereby the botanist can classify plants. Oh, I see. And that's why I can say this is related to the pea. <laughs> well, when you first came in, you thought flowers were just good to sort of look at because they were pretty, and it's true they are, <laughs> but you've now found out they're much more important than that. See if you can tell me now on the lily. Well? Here, take my pencil. These things here with the pollen on them. Yes are called the stamen. Mm -hmm. And this tall thing here with the sticky stuff is mm -hmm. called the pistil. Okay. And when the pollen gets on the pistil, a little thing grows down through the flower to the very bottom. Right, right to the bottom. Where the ovule is, and, and that's where the seeds okay. are. Okay, right. And what are these things? Well, the inside, uh, inside, um, like little petals, I call them, mm -hmm. petals, are petals. Yes. And the outside ones are sepals. And ordinarily, what does the sepal look like? It's usually green. Kind of more like this on the rose. More like on the rose. There's, there's the road bud. Mm -hmm. You can see the sepals covering it. Okay. And of course, flowers are extremely important to the plant because from it come the seeds. Mm -hmm. oh. I have some plants growing on my windowsill. <laughs> oh, what kind? Uh, petunias. Well, have they got flowers on them yet? No, they're greenish. <laughs> oh, well, when the flowers come now, you see if you can find those parts. I you try. know, Petals and sepals, stamens and pistils and... The pollen, and you might even sacrifice one and cut it open after it's, uh, you know, matured and see if you can find the seeds, too. Very good. Well, while you're doing that, Eddie and I, next week, are going to investigate the science of a bicycle. A bicycle? Right around the corner over there, you'll find a bicycle wheel. You want to bring it out and bring it over to here? Okay. Here you are. Okay. And I have a rope. Oops, excuse me. <laughs> you caught. I have a hook there. I have a hook on the end of that so I can put this rope on it, see? Now, if I hold this bicycle wheel up like this and let go, what do you think will happen? It'll fall. There. Fair enough. <laughs> However, if I now hold it up in exactly the same way and spin it, let's see, how have I got these arrows? I got the arrows going this way. So I'd spin it this way. What do you think will happen? No, I'm not quite sure. You're not <laughs> quite sure. Well, let's try it and see. Because this principle has to do with the gyroscope and it's one of the reasons why you can ride the bicycle down the street without holding onto the handlebars. Can you do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe after you understand the principle and how it applies to the gyroscope, you'll be able to, like this. Watch. It's standing up, and it's only supported on one side. Right. So next week, we'll understand more about that as we investigate the science of a bicycle. Be sure to be with us next week when Mr. Wizard and Eddie look into the science of the bicycle. Watch Mr. Wizard was presented by the Public Affairs Department of the NBC Television Network in cooperation with New York University.